Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. Rates on cash have been pretty good this year and it's all thanks to the Fed increasing rates to combat inflation. And with the current rates on cash and cash-like equivalents, it kind of feels a little alluring to keep a little extra cash on hand. But if you're gonna be keeping cash on hand, you wanna make sure you're getting the very best rates possible. After all, inflation, while definitely coming down from its highs of over 9%, is still hovering around 6%, which is still definitely higher than the target 2% rate or so. And we can expect rates to continue to increase until we get closer to that target rate, which means you should be able to find a decent place to park your cash for 2023. And just a quick note here, I'm always a fan of having cash on hand. We all need an emergency fund and maybe you just wanna beef up your cash reserves simply because the market and the economy, they're a little turbulent right now totally understandable, but I'm not the person to try and skirt investing during times like this. You know my slogan, ABB, always be buying. So no matter what the market is doing, whether it's up, whether it's down, whether it's sideways, just always keep dollar cost averaging because long-term investing, long-term in the market, that's how you grow your wealth. That's how you beat inflation, not an entire portfolio just sitting in cash. With that said, where are some of the best places you can keep your cash right now? Because even even though the Fed has raised interest rates and you can easily find accounts that are paying four or five percent, there's still a lot of accounts out there that are paying pretty darn lousy rates. Like traditional savings accounts at the big banks, right now they're still paying incredibly low rates. The first step up in rates is gonna come at high yield savings accounts. Most high yield savings accounts are found at credit unions or online banks. The rates I was able to find at the time of this filming have been 3.5% to 4%. In this same category, we could mention money market accounts, which function fairly similarly to a high yield savings account, but but they're held at brokerage houses. Current rates at Fidelity and Vanguard for these accounts is over 4%, so right on par with those high yield savings accounts. Technically, money market accounts do invest your money, but they do so in government bonds, so very reliable, and that's why they reflect current interest rates. And if you already have a brokerage account set up at one of these brokerage houses, it could just simply be easy to open up a money market account rather than going and opening a new account at a new institution. The great thing about high yield savings accounts or money market accounts is that the money there is liquid and easily accessible. You can withdraw the money at any time. So if this is money you know you're gonna need in the next couple weeks, for the next couple months, this is a great place to park it because you know it's always gonna be there. One caveat to note here is that these rates are not guaranteed. If you're opening up a new account at a new institution, make sure it's not just a teaser rate that lasts for just a brief period of time or on a certain dollar amount. Some of these accounts will actually offer a higher rate on say your first $5,000, but then a lower rate on any money beyond that. Also keep in mind that these rates can and do fluctuate based on what's happening in the market. If the Fed raises rates, the interest rates on these accounts will likely increase. But likewise, if the Fed reduces rates, the interest rates on these accounts will likely fall. And these changes happen quickly, sometimes the same day as when the Fed makes their announcement. CDs. CDs are generally going to have higher interest rates than high yield savings accounts. At the time of this filming, rates are about four and a half to 5%. Now as to why CDs pay higher rates than say a high yield savings, it's because they come with more restrictions. They may have a purchase minimum, but notoriously they have a lockup period, generally one to two years. But you can find ones with a shorter lockup period, maybe six months, or a longer lockup period, maybe five years. CDs can be a wonderful option. And just like savings accounts, they're FDIC insured so you know your money is safe. And you get the added peace of mind of knowing you've locked in an interest rate. But that could be a good or a bad thing. If the Fed goes on to increase interest rates, you've now locked in at a lower rate. But if the Fed starts to reduce rates, you've locked in at a higher rate. So it's best to lock in your interest rate in a falling interest rate environment. Also, being that this money is locked up, it means you won't be able to access it for however long the CD term is. So if you need this money in the near future, best not to lock it up. Now, typically it isn't totally inaccessible. You can usually break a CD early and there is a penalty, but it usually comes in the form of lost interest. But if you know you're gonna need this money in the near term, the next few weeks, the next few months, best to just go with a high yield savings or a money market account. But if you really wanna go the CD route and you wanna lock in an interest rate, but you might need that money in the near term, you can go with a no penalty CD, which as the name suggests, allows you to access the money completely penalty free 
With these CDs, it generally does have a little bit of a lower interest rate, more on par with a high yield savings, so you compromise a little bit on interest for the sake of convenience. Next up, T-bills. And I have to admit, I'm totally biased here. I'm loving T-bills. T-bills are issued by the government in four, eight, 13, 17, 26, and 52 week term lengths. Minimum purchase amount is $100. And the max purchase, 10 million. So you're probably not gonna be maxing out on these. T-bills are sold at a discount of face value and that discount ends up being the interest rate. Also, T-bills are backed by the full faith and creditworthiness of the US government. So they're incredibly safe. You can buy them knowing the US government has never defaulted on its debts. Once you purchase a T-bill, that money is locked up for the length of that T-bill. So whether it's four weeks or eight weeks or all the way up to 52 weeks, once you make your purchase, that interest rate is guaranteed, but that money is locked up. You cannot access it until that T-bill matures. So if you need this money within the next year, don't go buying a 52-week T-bill. The longer the maturity date, the higher the interest rate. For instance, the four-week T-bills are paying a little bit over 4.5%, and the 52-week T-bills at the time of this filming are paying 5%. And it's worth mentioning because I did a video on T-bills last year, whether you buy a four week, an eight week, a 13 week, whatever, the interest rate that's quoted is always an annual rate. I had a couple commenters who thought like a four week T-bill was paying four and a half percent interest over those four weeks. And while that would be amazing and we would all be lining up for that, that's not what's happening. The quoted rate is always based on an annual rate. So I just thought that was worth clarifying. You can set your T-bill purchases to be reoccurring. So you could have a new purchase of T-bill every four weeks. You could build your own T-bill ladder, purchasing ones of different maturity dates, say four weeks, eight weeks, so forth. Or you can just purchase them once and be done. It's really your call. You can purchase T-bills directly through the government's own website, treasurydirect.gov, or you can generally buy them directly through a brokerage house. For instance, if you already have an account with Fidelity, you can go ahead and purchase them directly through your account with Fidelity. This may be the easiest route if you already have an account here. Now, personally, for me, I like going directly through the government website, Treasury Direct, and it's simply because when I put money towards my brokerage account, I want that going towards the stock market. I don't want that to be my cash account. So for me, it's just a mental separation of what I want my money to be doing. But there's no better or worse place to buy. It's just whatever you prefer. And finally, honorable mention goes to I-bonds. Again, these are offered directly from the US government, just like T-bills. They currently have an interest rate of 6.89%, and that rate is set until the end of April. The interest rates on I-bonds is set every six months, and keep in mind that this rate rate is always quoted as an annual rate. Yes, they have a higher interest rate, but they come with longer lockup periods. I-bonds have much longer maturity dates, 30 years, but your money is truly only locked up and inaccessible for the first year. So that first 12 months, you cannot cash them, you cannot get to that money, for that first 12 months. After that time period, if you cash in the bond in less than five years, you lose the last three months of interest. So if you held an I-bond for 18 months and then decided to cash it, you'd only get 15 months worth of interest. If you cash it after that five year time period, there is no interest penalty. Now there are limits worth noting when it comes to I-bonds, and the primary limit to know is 10,000. You can buy $10,000 worth of I-bonds per social security number. You can buy an additional 5,000 with your tax refund if you so choose. You can also gift I-bonds to others, or if you have a trust, your trust can purchase an additional $10,000 worth of I-bonds. There are a lot of places right now where you can easily get three or four or 5% or higher on your cash. There's no reason not to take advantage of these interest rates. Whether you're using a high yield savings, a money market account, a CD, T-bills, I-bonds, these are all wonderful places to keep your cash in that they're incredible incredibly safe. It all really depends on how accessible you need your money to be and what works for you. Because the goal is that whenever you need it, your cash is there and at the ready. So where do you guys decide to keep your cash? Let me know in a comment down below. I post new videos every single week. If you got anything at all out of this one, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Or if you know of someone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I'll see you soon. Bye.